Well, here we are. We're out for a day's gravel pit piking. And by the look on the surface, at least for once the weather forecasters have got it right, there's a super southwesterly chop. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to move right over towards the southwestern end of the pit so that throughout the day I can move with the wind and use the wind to go down to the other end where we are now. There's some lovely shrubs around here, lots of self-seeded willows and, and alders and reeds, sedges, and there's beds of thistles all along this bank. It's quite a lovely spot. All these gravel pits are, are really attractive fisheries, even though they're quite young. Right, I think I'll stop the car here. The boat goes in easily here as well. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's actually that's stronger than what I thought. Should be good. It's often a bit of a rigmarole getting a small boat off the car when you're by yourself, but as long as you have your back bars fairly close to the end of the car. It'll normally slide. There we are. Right, let's get the oars out. Rolox. This is uh, quite a useful addition to the boat. What I've done is made an old seat. It's got a nice thick piece of foam inside and I've got some self-locking straps on two pieces of webbing that stitch to the bottom. Boat fishing can be very tiring all day and uh, that makes it that much more comfortable. Well, here we are. We've got the boat all set out, all the gear at the front there, nice and tidy, the rod's over there. Uh, I've got the anchor weights tied here to the, with a rope to the back of the boat because I'm going to pull it down this quite steep slope and I don't want it, the anchor weights to fall forward. Under here, I've got my dead baits. Before we go out, let's have a look at them. The type of baits you can use for pike today are, are numerous and endless, really. These are a lot of modern pre-packed sardine, sardines in various colours. We've got some smelts here, which are a very popular bait. Some little joey mackerel there. Lovely little things they are, super pike bait. One of my favourites, some eel sections. Eels about 12 inches long, cut in halves. They're a very good dead bait. And a, a friend of mine who works on a trawler gets me all sorts of things. These are some little baby hake. I don't, I've never used those before, but I'm sure they're going to catch fish. Any fresh dead bait will catch pike. And down here I've got some, some lures and plugs, if, if none of that lot works. Right, let's get the boat in. This is where you don't really need a night on the tiles the evening before you go parking. Right, that's got both the anchor weights ready. Here we go. Oh. oh, that's lovely. It's nice to be out afloat again. Right, what I'm going to do is row downwind here because Parallel with this bank is a very deep trough, and I'm going to try and anchor just on the edge of it. It's very important, obviously, in still water like this, not to go over the fish first. Right. That's that one. Now let's see where we are. Oh, that's lovely. The wind's taken us down a little. I think I'll put this one straight down. 
Got a nice angle there, and I can work this entire bay where this gully runs parallel with the bank. It's all about 10, 12 feet deep. It's a super spot. <clears throat> still quite a lot of green planktons in the water. It's still quite really warm for October. I never believe it's only a few weeks till Christmas. All right, there we are. Half a mackerel. Let's whack it out there. Across that bay, over into the wind. That's lovely. And a bit of line out, let that sink, and I'll put it back in the elastic band. If you tighten up on them too soon, the sliding stop knot doesn't allow the float to come up exactly where you're fishing and it comes in much closer to you than what you really want. Right, now I'm going to put a smelt here, slightly across the wind and downward so it comes out and nestles on the bottom in due lee of the boat, about 40 yards downwind. This is springing up quite some there, actually. I have to keep my eye on that net. That keeps wanting to depart. Right, we'll open that and put that in a band too. There we are. Oh, the wind's blown that band out of there. Just tighten up and see it wasn't a run. No. Right, I thought this was supposed to be a gentle sou'westerly, it's getting quite, um, quite choppy, really. But then I'd much sooner have a good blow for pike fishing, particularly on static dead baits in clear water, than when I would a flat calm. You get much more aggressive runs. I think the pike tend to smell and move with the wind, and anything that's going on under this massive undertow at, down the bottom there is bringing all the smell of the, the dead baits to them. And I, I think they tend to move a lot more in wind than what they do when there's a flat calm. Goodness me, I've only been in this spot five minutes and I've got a real belter on this rod and it's going right up into the wind and I'm going to hit it straight on. Oh, dear me, that must have taken that almost immediately. That's pulling the, pulling the rod round. Oh, it feels a good fish. Gosh! <laughs> oh. Oh. oh! I'm going to have to turn around for this one. Oh, that feels a good fish. Oh. Goodness me, the power they've got this time of the year is incredible. Oh. Oh. It's keeping very deep there. Feels like a very nice fish indeed. Oh. 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 There he comes. Oh, yes, it's a good one. Let's hope he doesn't come to the boat too early. I don't want to lose it around the anchor ropes. Oh, yes, that's a... Oh, dear me, that's a beauty. Oh, oh. Ah. Right. I normally like to hand line these out, but this looks as though he's going to jump again any minute. I think I'm going to... Yes, he is. I think I'm going to get him in the net just to be on the safe side. Something much smaller. I... Whoops, the net's getting caught with the other rod there. I might hand line in and then glove out, but this one, no, we'll get him in the net. Super. It's better to be safe than sorry. It's a bit risky leaning over the boat in these conditions. Let's have a look at him. God, what a super fish. Oh, oh. Right, in you come. Right. I think what I'll do is... Uh, Weigh that one straight away. That looks worth putting on the scales. Now, 
And a lot of people put the pike into a separate uh, weigh sling, but I find it's just as easy to weigh it in the net. I know what the, uh, the net goes when it's wet. It weighs about a pound and three quarters. Right. Let's weigh this one straight away. Whoops, keep still. Right. Oh. Oh. 19, 12, so less about a pound and three quarters. That's give or take 18. That's a super fish for the autumn. A lot of people have trouble unhooking pike, but even big pike can be unhooked quite easily and safely with a gloved hand and just lift it up like this to expose the hooks. There they are. Look at those teeth, row upon row. Oh, keep still. There we are. There they are. We can see the hooks there. And there we are. Look at that mouth. You could throw a three pound bream down that quite easily. Unbelievable. Row upon row of needle sharp teeth. Ooh. Ah. Whoops. Oh. oh, let go. Oh, come here, there you go. Oh. Super. Here's my simple end rig for fishing the static dead bait with a float. The sliding float is immediately above the trace with a little bead there which goes up and stops the float at the stop knot, which in this case is about 15, 18 feet deep. Below that, on the trace, I've got a couple of lead-free shots to keep the bait down on the bottom. And on the business end, a couple of size 8 trebles. In each case, two of the barbs have been flattened. Let's try one of the most popular pipe baits, half a mackerel. The remaining barb goes into the actual tail root, which is very strong. Mackerel have got very strong sinewy muscles there, and so the bait holds on very well. And the bottom one goes on down there. There we are, that's a super bait. It casts well, and it's very effective for pike. On the second rod, let's try a smell. These are a very popular bait with today's pike anglers. And I hook it on in exactly the same way as I do all dead baits, on the assumption that the pike is going to swallow it head first like that, so everything's pointing the right way. Right. We'll uh, put this right downwind, I think. That can come in quite close there. This breeze is blowing a bit to the side now. I'm getting in a bit of a drift on these baits. This carries on. I think I'm going to have to uh, move the aft anchor about. That one's drifting in quite a lot. It really has swung round. It's coming more from the, the west now than the south. Well, I think that's settled. Put it on a band. Oh, there's a lot of gulls over there now. Where's those binoculars gone? So that. Oh, there's thousands of them. Mostly all black-headed gulls, I think. By the look of them. Oh, there's a big grey one at the end there. I don't know what that is. It's like a big herring gull. Yes, yeah, so I think I'm having problems with that seed or flower stuff that's coming off the land there. It's clogging the line, and that float isn't going up to the stop knot. I think I'm going to have to have that in and clean it all off. Goodness me, it's all over the place here. I'm sure it's the what's left of the seed heads on that willow herb on the coming off the land there. It's hopeless. I can't fish 
a static dead bay like this because the floats just keeps permanently jigging it off the bottom. And the secret of dead baiting, if you're trying to present a, a static dead bait and suggest the fish is dead on the bottom, is uh, keep moving it. Oh, here we are. We've got a big clump around the stop knot here. Isn't it? It's not letting the float come up. It's a nuisance, that. I really can't do anything about this. It's all up the line. It looks like washing on the line. Goodness me, I don't know. Anything I could do is put perhaps another swan shot on the line, but then that, uh, that tends to give a little bit more resistance than I really want to. Let's whack it out again and try. Whack it across the wing with the other one a little bit further down and see what happens with that. Love fishing with elastic bands. I know there's gadgets on the market, run clips that you can use, bits of plastic to clip on, but I don't know, I, I like to hear that clip as it plonk as it comes out of an elastic band. It's quite exciting. Sometimes I'm not watching the float and looking at birds through the binoculars and just looking around me, and all of a sudden that little clip, it's hardly discernible, but it, your ears get used to it when you're looking forward to a pike run. Goodness me, that was quick. I just whacked one of those dyed sardines up into the wind and it went about three yards before it went under. And I'm going to hit it now. Yes. Oh, yes. God, I... God, this feels a good fish. Well, they work, those dyed baits. There's no doubt about that. Oh, this is a very good fish. This is... Goodness me, it's taken a lot of line. You always know when it's a good one, not you get that lovely whistle. Oh, yes. Careful, Wilson. Go. Cool. This is a very good one. Take this very carefully. Go. Cool. Can't do anything with it at the moment. This is really going. Wow! <laughs> it's woken up. It's woken up. Oh, that's a good job. I've got 11 pound line on. I think I'd better do anything with this. Oh, it's a lovely fish. Oh, yes, a very good double. Still going as well. Oh, that line's really whistling. I don't like to bring them too close to the boat too quickly because if it gets around the anchor rope, I'm done. And I'm in very deep water here, so it's still going. Oh. <laughs> I'm tempted to bring this up and see if it will tail walk, but I don't know. I don't want to lose it. It's coming up near the surface now. Oh, what a super fish. Let's get the net out. Oh. Come on, baby. Oh, no. <laughs> I did it then. Oh. The net span as I went to lift it out. Oh. Wilson, that's unforgivable. That is unforgivable. If I lose it now, I deserve to. Ah. Come on. Well, if I get this one in, I definitely don't deserve it. Come on. Yes, he's there. <laughs> oh, that's a biggie. Oh, magic. God. Oh, 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 oh. oh, what a super fish. Keep still. Oh, that's beautiful. Keep still. Oh. oh, let's unhook it straight away. Whoa, 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 whoa. Keep still. That's why I always keep this foam at the bottom of the boat so they don't knock themselves about when they, they come in and they're still fairly fresh. Right. 
Hooker. It's a bit of lap. Hook's coming out of the net. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I can't find my dead bait, but there's half a tiny little purse he's just coughed up there. Oh, that's a super fish. Oh, look at that. About 19 to 20 pounds. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. Oh, whoa. keep still, keep still. What about that? <laughs> well, I've had a couple of nice doubles on the static dead baits, but it's getting very bright now, so what I fancy doing is a bit of lure fishing and a bit of moving about. This is one of my favourite lures, the good old spoon. I've got loads of them in here. I've got a wallet full of them. All different shapes and sizes, different colours. I've also got some big S plugs, which are a super lure. And I've got another box here if they don't work. You can't really get through them all in the day. And I, I must admit, I tend to stick to a couple of favourites. This is one that I've been very interested in recently. It's an American lure. Um, it's only just reached the tackle shops in this country. It's a really weird contraption. You'd never believe it would catch fish. There's a vibratory spoon there and a skirt which flops around behind this big hook. Although I found pike have come a little short when catching them and so I've wired in this six treble just behind it and that invariably is the one which takes the fish. And that's how it works. Lovely thing about these big spoons, they really do cast well into the wind. Super lures. I always like to point the, the rod at the lure. A lot of my friends think it's a bit suicidal because if you get a big fish, it seems as though it might snap the line. But of course, there's an awful amount of stretch in the 11 pound line when you've got 20, 30 yards out. And if you fish with the rod sideways, sometimes the fish can grab hold of the lure, shake its head, and get off before you can really do much about it. So I like to keep the rod actually pointed at the lure at all time. One degree to the side so I can just see that rod tip movement. I don't seem to lose so many that way. In this bright weather, I'm really moving the spoon through the water because the water's quite clear and I don't want to give the, the pike too much of a choice whether they're going to whip up off the bottom and snap it up or not. It's about five or six feet here, and there's quite a few beds of Canadian palm weed and milfoil on the bottom, which, which of course there would be in mid-October. I was tempted to use a diving plug, but I think it's going to be a little bit too much of a weed problem, so I'll stick with a spoon, a spoon. Oh, here we go. Yes, oh, dear me. Oh, that's a good take. What's a good fish. Oh. Oh. oh, this is pulling. That really slammed into that. Oh, it's a super fish. Oh. Yes. Oh. oh, this is where the, sp the spoon comes out. You've got to be so careful. Try and glove this out. The spoon's just in the top of the jaw there. Come on. I've slackened the clutch, up, clutch off, so if he makes a last-minute thrash, I've got him. No, he's the mine. Oh. What I normally do at this instance is carefully take the treble out like, like that. Oh, that's a lovely, clean fish. What a super fight. Beautiful. Lovely, long, veritable lean machine. Super fish. Let's put him straight back. Oh, in you go. That was nice. Right. I think I'll concentrate on that area. That's good. Let's see if we can get a few more of those before the sun goes down. <laughs> 